Now, the steps in waxing procedure. First, apply a die spacer on the die to compensate for the thickness of the cement after cementation of the crown and leave it to dry. As you can see here, we apply the die spacer away from the finishing line no more than one millimeter. This diagram shows us why we leave one millimeter or less at the finishing line. As the die spacer here acts to compensate for the cement after cementation of the restoration, if there was continuation of this gap to the finishing line, meaning there will be a gap between the end of the crown and the finishing line, this is called open margin. Here, this will lead to dissolution of the cement, forming a gap which will be filled by food, then future carries. Therefore, it is very important that the end of the crown sits directly on the tooth surface with no spaces. Step two in wax procedure is that we should cover the die with a uniform thickness of wax. This may be done by adding increments of wax, one on top of the other, but this is not indicated because it may entrap air bubbles between the layers. So, the correct procedure is by dipping the dye in a container of molten wax. This is the first layer on top of which layers of wax are placed to form the tooth anatomy. Step 3 add wax to the proximal surfaces of the preparation after placing the dye in the cast. Step 4. Build the axial walls, the buckle and the lingual walls to the normal contour. Step 5. Build the occlusal surface of the restoration following the curve of Spee and curve of Wilson. Step 6. Check and adjust the occlusal relation with the opposing teeth in centric and eccentric relation. Step 7. Check the margins of the wax pattern to ensure that the margins of the wax pattern have no over or under extension and are smooth and intact. After completion of the wax pattern, certain steps are done to convert the wax pattern into the metal final restoration. These are first attaching a sprue which is a duct of wax that will be attached to the crucible former Here we see that the sprue is attached from one end with the wax pattern, the other end with the crucible former. Then they are placed 
inside the casting ring as you can see here this is the casting ring which is the metal ring this one and this is the crucible former here here the crucible former will act as a funnel that will lead the melting alloy into the space of the wax pattern this casting ring with the wax pattern and crucible former are poured with investment then they are heated and in a procedure called burnout procedure in which all the wax of the wax pattern and the sprue are removed or burnt leading to the shape of the crucible former the sprue and the wax pattern during casting the metal will be forced through the crucible former and pushed through the sprue to occupy the space of the wax pattern as you can see here this is the final result we check it on the cast if it is ok we dislodge the sprue and finish the crown now coming to the sprue it is a small diameter pin made of wax or plastic or metal one end of it is attached to the wax pattern while the other end is attached to the crucible former it provides a channel after burnout procedure to act as an inlet for the gold which is forced into the mold cavity requirements of the sprue the sprue must allow the molten wax to escape from the mold cavity second it must allow the molten metal to flow into the mold cavity with little turbulence as possible number three the metal within the sprue must remain molten slightly longer than the alloy that has filled the mold this will provide a reservoir to compensate for the shrinkage that occurs during solidification of the metal casting meaning that when the metal occupying the wax pattern area is solidifying it may shrink therefore the metal molten metal inside the sprue must remain molten so it will seep inside the area created by the shrinkage of the metal now materials used in the construction of the sprue are wax it is the preferable material to make a sprue because it melts at the same temperature of the wax pattern 2. Plastic The plastic used should be of a low melting temperature therefore it will burn without leaving any residue Number 3. Metal It should be made from non-rusting metal to avoid possible contamination of the wax dimensions and location of the sprue as you can see by this diagram there are different diameters of the sprue diameter the size of the sprue or the diameter of it must be as large as possible to improve the flow of the molten metal into the mold cavity 
and ensure the reservoir to compensate for the shrinkage of the metal during solidification. Number two, length. The length of the sprue must be adjusted so that when we attach the sprue to the crucible former, the margin of the wax pattern, as you can see here, should be about six millimeters away from the end of the casting ring. It is made so that the wax pattern will be in the center of the casting ring and surrounded by a uniform thickness of investment material. As you can see here, all the space will be filled up to here, will be filled with investment material. Location. The position of the attachment of the sprue with the wax pattern should be to the bulkiest areas of the wax pattern and should be at an angle to allow the incoming metal to pass freely to all portions of the mold cavity without any turbulence. Thank you. Whoa!